There is a moment every winter when the memories of that childhood winter so long ago flood my mind. The winter of the Anschluss. The winter Hitler invaded our country and took from us all my family and I held dear. When I look back, I see pieces, some significant, some trivial, but all combining through a mysterious alchemy to comprise a life. As I grow older, I reach back to understand, to try to find the invisible links between the pieces that give meaning to the whole, before the picture disappears, before the secrets fade forever. It's a beautiful church, but it's getting late. Let's go home. It's all right. I'm allowed in. A Jew can enter a cathedral. I come with Lisa all the time. Come on. boys could be arrested for passing out this bill. That's my property. It's mine now. Get out of here. Go on home. Learn to be children, not puppets. I haven't seen you in ages. I bet you only came here to get warm. No, I came to see you. <coughs> now, here's a girl who knows her way out of an uncomfortable situation. This is my friend Mitzi. Mitzi, this is Father Bernard. He baptized me and confirmed me. And hear her confessions, which in itself is a full-time occupation. Mitzi. How do you do? And do you remember my friend Inga? Inga? You shouldn't have been there in the first place. You are an hour late for dinner. The soup is boiled down to nothing and the roast shrank to a little brown dot. <laughs> Inga, this is not funny. You had us all very upset. I know you know better, Inga. 
You deliberately allowed Mitzi to believe you could stay out that late. And Mitzi, I know you're still new here, but I can't tell you everything. Some of your actions must be dictated by good common sense. Ma'am, I'm afraid that's something I never had too much of. <laughs> In your line, the hilarity of this situation escapes me. These are bad times for a Jewish girl to be causing a commotion in church. But I wasn't causing a commotion. That's enough. Now go to your room and think about what I've told you. Mama said I could bring you a sandwich from that little brown dot we used to call a roast. Thank you, old Oscar. That your mama and papa are right, you know. You have to be careful. I know. And I thought about what Bati said. I just don't think the way they do. I'm proud of being Jewish, and I don't think of myself as a Jewish girl making a commotion in a church. Just a girl. And that's the way you should think. But you should also be aware that there are some who don't think that way. They hear a name, and they try to figure out if it's Jewish. They see a face. They wonder if they should hate it. You're getting older now, Ingeline. You must be aware that these things exist. I do. The most important, you must not let them affect the way you think about yourself. Object. Can you read this town to Zora? Can you tell me what it is? Um, uh, it's a, a fountain pen. Perhaps a waterman. <laughs> she can see through that thing. Ah, oh, with a disbeliever in the crowd, Count Zora. Could I impose upon your ladyship to turn your back on this Philistine? With pleasure, Madame Mueller. Penetrate your mind? Um, um, it is a rather dirty hairpin. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I knew Reed was the clue word for writing, but I forgot the clue words for pen or pencil. Tell me is for pen. Would you tell me? Would, did it? It's for pencil. Ah, oh, right. So how did you know? Simple deduction. I know how proud Annie is of that pen. Aha! Brilliant, Coach Zora. Oh, thank you. Um, bum, 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 What's bum, that song? Bum, I don't know. My brother taught it to me. I like it. Bum, 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 bum. You don't think this is too difficult for my little Fritz? Fritz is a very bright boy. But will he enjoy a book set in a foreign locale? Well, very now. What child can resist the allure of the American West? White Cloud pulled his knife from its sheath and held it before the chief. Then pointed it at Running Deer as he spoke. This man is my brother. His blood has mingled with mine since childhood. White Cloud held up his wrist to show a scar across his veins. Behold the scar of that ritual that bound us together. Maybe we should have cut our wrists. Inga, it's a ritual, not major surgery. If you kill him, you kill me. If you shed his blood, mine flows with it. But if you cut his tethers and set him free, my spirit is released with his. Beautiful. Only an Indian could say something like that. So true. I think it's done. The ritual is complete. And now... Toast to blood sisterhood. To blood sisterhood. Girls, what are you doing? Nothing, Mama. Reading, talking. What's my cookie wine doing out? You were drinking. No, Papa. Is that what your friend teaches you? No, Papa. It was my idea. Tell her to go home. 
I wouldn't have her bringing her family customs into my home. Papa! Judy. It's all right. Tell your father that I'm sorry and goodbye. Since he cannot see or hear me. Hey, no, wait. No. Stay here and clean up this mess. My grandfather had told me that every small pain strengthens us and helps us endure our greater pains in life. I thought about that. It helped me a little. If you won't come near Austria. Oh, God is listening to you, Franz. If he takes one step across the border, Mussolini will come to defend us. Hitler can't risk that confrontation. Well, what do you risk when you make that assumption, Frau? Papa, please, not at dinner. No, no, really. I would like to know what it would hurt you to get your quota numbers. It won't hurt anything. Well, it's simply unnecessary. I have no intention of living or working in America, and I'm not going to apply for my quota number. I, I, I. What about your wife, your daughter? I've consulted with my wife. Are you content to leave them in jeopardy? You're the one who's planning to leave them. He's leaving with my blessing, Franz. Hoping you'll do the sensible thing and follow me. Papa, will you stop blaming Franz? Our decision to stay is a joint decision. Then there are two fools in this house. And one meddlesome prophet of doom. Right. I'm just an old man who doesn't know anything. But I've seen more than you, Franz. And I realize that it's dangerous to feel too comfortable or too safe. That's why I've got my quota number for America and my visa to Yugoslavia. Enough, Papa. Ingerlein, you've hardly touched your food. I'm not too hungry, Moti. Well, it's no wonder. I don't know why we can't have one night where we have a decent, civil, quiet conversation. Help Mitzi clear for dessert. What are you humming? Nothing, Barty. Where did you hear it? I heard someone humming it. She was at the Mueller's this afternoon. Is that where you heard her? What's the matter, Barty? I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you the words to that simple song. Raise high the flag. Close fast and firm the ranks. Essay, march on until the Jews are in their graves. That's a Nazi marching song your friends are teaching you. The hmm? Mueller's are not Nazis. You don't even know them. We don't have to know them. We know what they teach their daughter. Inga faced the facts. Look who's talking. Stay out of this, Oscar. Inga, I won't have you spending any more time with the Mueller's. Do you understand me? I won't stop seeing Lisa. You will do as I tell you to do. You just don't want me to see them because they're not Jewish. You've never liked Lisa because she's not Jewish. It's just as bad as hating someone because they are Jewish. I didn't know the words to that song. It was just a bunch of notes to me. Lisa, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Papa talks to Heinz about the party this and the party that. They know it's against the law, so they never say the words. But I know they're talking about the Nazis. So you see? Your father's right. He's not right about you. So, what are we gonna do now? I can't go to your house, and you can't come to mine. We meet in secret places, in dark alleys, where only the night creatures meet. Never done this before. What? Something my parents don't want me to do, and you lie to them about it. Me too. But I know that I'm right and they're wrong. Me too.
For the first time in my life, I understood profoundly what guilt was. I had deceived my parents, and something terrible had happened to my mother. It was my fault. All the logic and good reason in the world could not convince me otherwise. It wasn't an accident. What? I said it wasn't an accident. What are you talking about, Hannah? Someone poured soapy water on the landing and then knocked on the door. Do you know who it was? A monster with the face of a boy. About Tommy's age. I'd stopped him from handing out Nazi leaflets the day before. My God. Have you told the police? I gave them a description this morning. But I couldn't describe his rotten soul. That's his most distinguishing feature. Outwardly, he looks like a hundred other boys. I would expect that in Munich. But not here. Munich will be here before we know it. It was an isolated incident, Oscar, and that's all! A comforting illusion you can no longer afford, Franz. I'm afraid I've set them off again. Chancellor von Strusslich will never allow Nazi agitation in Austria. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Strusslich will get Hitler's gentleman's promise to annex the rest of Europe and politely step over Austria. Oh, no, oh pardon me. I didn't know you were Austrian. Allow me to remove my bullet from your chest. Papa, really? Well, we delude ourselves. Not hundreds, but thousands of little boys are drawing swastikas in their school books, admiring the armbands their mothers are sewing for them, and practicing their sieg heils in the closet while waiting for Hitler to saunter in and make it all legal. Oscar, you are shocking the children. I'm not shocked. I've seen boys like this. But we're tiring Hannah with this conversation. Oh, no, it's wonderful to see you, really. Well, I think you've seen and heard enough of us for one day. Yes, you must rest. Say goodbye to your Aunt Marion and Uncle Herbert, Inga. Inga? Bye. father would get mad and take it out on me. I don't care about that. Boring was worse. I spent all day Sunday standing outside your building waiting for you to go in or out. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Of course not. You were at the hospital all day. I know. Don't feel bad. I just thought I might see you. Girls, we're supposed to be exercising our bodies, not our mouths. Thank you for the clarification, Frau Kraus. Fight it! Seem to be doing her body much good. <laughs> I asked Father Bernard for a special prayer for your mother. He said the most special prayers are the ones that come from your heart, regardless of the words. Thank you, Lisa. My mother would appreciate that if she knew. I wonder, are prayers carried by God and the person you're praying for, or is God carried in the prayer? And if God is carried in the prayer, do the words have any power if the person doesn't know you're saying them? Rabbi Toglet says that God is in all of us. So I think that God is carried in the prayer, whether the person knows you're praying for them or not. Here comes Hines. What's he doing here? If he sees me, he'll tell Papa. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Papa wants you home quickly. Why? What's the matter? Don't ask questions. Just come home. Not until you tell me. Suppose I go home alone and tell Father I saw you with the Jewish girl. She has a name. Not to me. You make me sick. Why don't you just leave us alone? I'll go home when I want to. 
can't be there every minute, Franz. She's sleeping now. Worrying won't help her. Hello? Yes, she is. Just a moment. We'll be back, but I don't believe everything Papa says anymore. Do you have an address? Where will you be? I don't know. I don't know anything. Being dragged away like one of the suitcases. Oh, I almost forgot. I've been given something special to hold, Captain Sora. A medal? Right. My skating medal. You love it. That's why I want you to have it. But I don't have anything. No. Wait. Take my star. But you know I can't wear it. Just keep it. Better go home. Before our secret life becomes public. Remember, blood sisters forever. I will. I'll think about you every day. Me too. Like a prayer. Just miss your mama, Inga. She'll be home soon. Don't worry. She'll be home very soon. I couldn't tell my father that I missed my friend, mourned her departure, that I had hardly thought about my mother for hours. My secrets were multiplying themselves with every lie and unspoken truth. I felt as if I were truly leaving childhood behind. 
and that my growing sadness was my fare for passage into adulthood. In Nathan the Wise, we see how a writer can use the nuances of dialogue to create different characters. One well-chosen phrase, one idiomatic expression, can call to the reader's mind a character's entire life and background. If the Jewish characters in this play Good news. How's Mochi? More good news. We had lunch together at the hospital and she complained about everything. No. No, 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 that's good. Complaining is your mother's way of reaffirming life. Papa Oscar. Mm. When are we going to the hospital? Mitzi's fixing us an early supper. As soon as your father gets home, we'll eat and go. Don't leave those there, Inga. This isn't a library. Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very busy, thank you very much. Any mail for me today? Yes, I do have a little something for you. It's from Lisa. Thank you, Mitzi. Jews? I thought that kind of thing was against the law, Opa Oscar. The Nazis work at night, like cockroaches. Does it bother you? Yes. Good. Half of being Jewish is getting bothered. The other half is getting over it. Let's have lunch. There's always been an oppressor, Ingeline. The Tsar. The Ku Klux Klan in America. The Nazis. The uniforms change, but they're all the same beast inside. Why is it just the Jews that they oppress? It isn't just the Jews. It's anyone who's different. That's what your father doesn't understand. He's a decent man. He thinks he can find the decency in every other man. It's like Chancellor von Schustnick and Hitler. Schustnick thinks he can fly to Germany, not some strudel with Hitler, and talk him out of sending tanks and troops into Austria. Hitler will smile at him, tell him a few reassuring lies, and Schustnick will end up eating dirt, not strudel. First, he'll agree to make the Austrian Nazi party legal. Then he'll allow them to hold demonstrations. So. Hitler will have Austria by the throat from inside the country. You understand? With yeah. so just a smile, some pastry, and a few lies to a decent man. Is that why you're always yelling at Vati? Because he's decent? I yell at your father because decency is not enough. You have to be smart, too. She won't leave, Opa Oscar. I'm not leaving, Ingeline, until your mother's all better. And your father gets the quota number. Well, finally! We were about to send out the hounds to look for you. Opa Oscar took me to the chimney suite for birthday lunch. Was it delicious? Yes. That room for cake? Yes, but where's Vati? Aren't we supposed to go to the hospital first? No, I don't know. Let's go see. My darling girl. Oh. Happy birthday. Thank you, Vati. This is the best birthday present. Oh, no, we have a better one. Vati has tickets for you and him and Opa Oscar to the opera Sunday afternoon. But you must come, too. Another time. Now blow out your candles. Make a wish. It came true. Make another. I told my parents I had never been happier. But truthfully, that evening of my 13th year, 
Neither I nor they had ever worked so hard to be happy as we felt the world changing around us. you liked it. Shakespeare with music. What could be better? If the king liked Macbeth, then why did Macbeth kill him? Greed. Macbeth wanted more than the king's friendship. He wanted to be king himself. Are they Nazis? I don't know. Wait. Listen. Them back. Just let them back. Yes, boy. Yes. Isolated incident. Don't you dare! Don't you dare use this boy's misfortune to lecture me! If it takes a little boy's blood to enlighten you, then by God, I will use this. He thinks, be quiet, both of you. He, he thinks that I'm responsible for everything that happens. You're responsible for what happens if you don't leave. You're responsible for not heeding the warnings. And are you God, old oh, man? Do you know what's going to happen? Perhaps Hitler will invade. Perhaps I'll get run over by a truck. A truck doesn't have a mind with intentions. A truck isn't aiming itself at you. Hitler is! All I ask is that you get your quota numbers just to be prepared. Inga. No. Uh. Is Tommy all right? Yes, yes, darling. They, they think you'll be fine. Are you feeling better, Muti? Oh, yes. I'll be on my crutches tomorrow, and we'll have races across the living room. What about you, darling? We know how everybody feels except you. I'm all right. You've had quite a shock, haven't you? 
I know you've been worried about Tommy, and I know you're worried about me. And I know you miss your friend, don't you? Things do get better, darling. Do they? Yes, baby. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Plebiscite is an example of democracy in action. Every adult Austrian will be able to vote yes or no for free, independent Austria. Yes, Gerda. But it's sneaky. It doesn't mean what it says. It's just a way of saying no to Angelus. Oh, it's not sneaky, Gerda. It's simple. Like most democratic ideas, it's simple. And the effects are far-reaching. One of the effects of a yes vote would be to stop the movement for annexation to Germany. My father said it's like a trick question. Austrians who like Hitler must still vote yes to support Austria. One's vote is one's own. And there are no musts in the privacy of a voting booth. Now, supposing we put our test aside for today and have our own plebiscite among the children of Austria. Yay! All right, all right. Take out your papers and mark your ballots. Yes for free, independent Austria, no against. Thank you. It's nothing. No, not just for the flowers, but for helping me. I don't remember very much, but I know you helped me. I'm glad we were there. So am I. Were your parents angry with you? They were too worried to be angry. It helps to be unconscious when you've disobeyed your parents. Did they know you wanted to join the marchers? Some of my friends from the university were marching, and they asked me to come along. Mother and father said no. But it was a matter of honor. Disobeying my parents was a lesser evil than not meeting my obligations as a man. I know what you mean. I've had to disobey my parents before. I don't understand it. They raise us to be independent. They want us to be strong. But when we express that independence and strength, they get upset. I guess they're torn between wanting us to be strong and wanting us to be safe. What's safe anymore? Safety is an illusion. It's a comforting lie we tell ourselves while the Nazis smash us in the heads and send our German brothers to camps. But that can't happen here after the plebiscite. My mother gets a letter every day, unsigned with a swastika or skull and bones at the bottom. It says, divorce the Jew Loveberg. My father, who studied and worked for years to build his medical practice, is now nothing more to these people than the Jew Loveberg. They dehumanize us, debase us, and they won't stop because of a plebiscite. Our parents can fool themselves, but we mustn't. 
Vienna is no longer a Strauss waltz, Inga. It's a dance with the devil. What do you want? I want to see the rulers. They move every week, ago. They're back. I know they are. Not to this building. And don't let me hear you making a racket out here again. I remember you now. You are the... The Jewish girl. You can say it. It's not a dirty word. It only sounds that way when a bigot says it. Easy, Easy. You don't have to do it all at once. Take a line. Just in time. Moody, you're up. Does it hurt? Oh, it's just a little uncomfortable, shall we say. On our way today, don't force it. No. I have to practice if I'm going to make it to the polls on Sunday. And a one vote, more or less, won't make any difference. Oh, it will to me. But I think that's enough for one day. Oh, oh. Thank you, darling. There. That was wonderful, Moody. <laughs> Did you give Tommy his flowers? Yes. He seems much better, but he's still upset. Mm, understandably. I bet the news of the plebiscite will cheer him up. Yes, I guess so. Mitzi, did anyone call for me today? Uh, no, but I put your laundry in your room for you. I'll get it! Ah, uh, Gusto. The doctor sent these manuscripts for your mother. Is that Gusto? Yes, ma'am. Come in. Hello. Thank you, Mitzi. Thank you, Alfred. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Inga, time to get to your homework. Yes, Moody. What brilliant novelist am I going to discover this week? Dearest Inga, if my handwriting is shaky, it's because my hand is shaking. All of me is shaking. I've been writing to you for weeks, and tonight I found out that none of the letters were ever sent. Papa says the daughter of an essay colonel should not be corresponding with the Jewess. Papa told me this because he was angry at me, because he wanted to punish me for yelling at him, and for hitting Hein so hard with my fist that his nose started bleeding. I can't tell you why. He might hate me forever if I told you. I have to sneak this out of the house to mail this. Papa made me swear I wouldn't send you any more letters. He said when the Angelus comes, we'll move back to Austria. If I break my word to him, he will leave me here with Aunt Louisa. I believe he would. The world is upside down, and the only thing that makes any sense is my friendship with you. My grandmother once gave me Crystal Bell for my birthday. It made such a sweet, sparkling sound, like the voice of an angel. And then Heinz tore out the clapper, and it was mute. I am like that bell now. Think of me, all my love, your blood sister, Lisa. Bloody rides in Vienna, Austrian chaos. Bloody riots in Vienna, Austrian chaos. Bloody riots in Vienna. Have you heard about any rioting? No. As yet, I have encountered no man who would not rather yield to Caesar's demand than fight. If 
tidy the kids and send the children home immediately, please. Thank you, Annie. Girls, I must announce that classes have been dismissed. School will be closed until further notice. You are to go to your homes as quickly as possible. Frau Director Voldemar asks that there be no loitering in the streets for any reason whatsoever. It's happening! Harm Hitler! Silence! Regardless of what's happening outside, there will be order in this classroom. You will collect your things and leave with decorum. The site's been cancelled. There. Look. That's what's happening. Those Germans? No, those are ours. As homegrown as a mangy dog at a fire hydrant. The Germans will follow, though. They want their turn at the fire hydrants also. Come on. Outside the government building, and the chanting has grown louder as word has spread that Gehring is demanding Schuschnigg's resignation. Schuschnigg is reportedly awaiting word from President Miklos. Government sources tell us that, barring unforeseen circumstances, capitulation is imminent. Hey, but Schuschnigg brought the lamppost. Can he really do that? Oh, anything is possible now. Is the government falling? Calling off the plebiscite to appease Hitler was like promising one finger to a hungry lion. Now Hitler wants the whole government to resign. The rumors of riots and chaos and bloodshed were false from A to Z. But I have no doubt that the blood of innocent Austrian citizens will be shed if I remain in office. Therefore, I bid the Austrian people farewell to the heartfelt wish May God save Austria. Will there be Anschluss now? Yes. Yes. The world's upside down. Franz. for the quarter numbers now. We want the Jew, Oscar Reichman. What for? That's our business. Are you Reichman? No, I am his son-in-law. Mutti! Go back to the bedroom. Will you bring Go us on. Reichman the Jew, or do we drag him out? Reichman the Jew is here. Hardly worth waiting for. Put your clothes on and bring a toothbrush. One minute. You too. We'll do as they say. I can't go with him. We have no choice. Yes, you do. You can't go. Hannah, they have guns. They won't bring those guns into this house. We'll take it outside. If you take it outside, you may never come home again. Hannah, stop. He's right. Mitzi, look after Inga and Hannah, please, yes, until sir. Oscar and I return. No, you are not leaving. Nobody is leaving this house. Hannah, I have made a decision. Now, I think I'm doing what's best for all of us. So I expect you to support me by being strong. Please, Hannah, please. For Inga. For Inga, Hannah, if not for me. What are you waiting for? Let's go!
come, little one. Help your grandpa to pick out a tie. I want to look especially nice today. Forget you saw me that way, all right. I was just upset. I didn't mean what I said. They're coming back. Of course they will. That's right up there. Make sure you get your toothbrush. <laughs> God's earth, Franz. There's no shame in that. Come on! I didn't see my father and my grandfather scrubbing the streets for the Nazis, but I have imagined the scene a thousand times to this day. Each time when I see the humiliation in their eyes, I cry for them. There's no reason for you to go to work today. Boss Teller, it's a matter of pride. Pride? Your safety's more important than your pride. Sure, Inger, that was Annie for you. She wants you to meet her at the Steffensplatz at noon. You're not going out. This is a day for Jews to stay at home. Almost every day is lately. I'll call her back. Oh, no, no, she said not to. Her mother is sick. Is a step behind misfortune. And Heinz and your mother? They're here. They're fine. What happened with Heinz, Lisa? I can't talk about it. Why not? Nothing shocks me anymore. I wake up one day and suddenly the city is filled with Nazi flags and Hitler posters, but I'm not shocked. I expect it. This is what Mina looks like. I've been living with it for months. After a while, you learn to put it someplace else in your mind. It's just the surface of things. It's more than just the surface if you're Jewish. I know. But I mean, you can't let it affect you. Affect the way you think. 
You can't let them steal your inner feelings. That's why I can't tell you about Heinz. I'm afraid it would change something deeper. Something important. What's that? It's a uniform I have to wear today. Stop it, Inga! It's a young metal uniform, isn't it? Girls for Hitler! Yes! Do you think I want to wear it? I don't know. Do you? No. And you probably don't want to go to Hitler's procession, but you will. And you probably don't want to throw flowers at him and yell, Heil Hitler, with your arms stuck up in the air. But you will. Like a machine. Exactly. Like a machine. I have no choice. I live with my parents. I have to do certain things. But it doesn't change the way I feel inside. Well, it changes the way I feel inside. I was wrong. I am shocked by something. You. Inga, you're my best friend! Not anymore. Hurry. You'll be late for the parade. And where are Vati and Oboscar? Oh, they're fine, darling. They're at the Lofbergs. Come here. What happened? Tommy had a brain hemorrhage. They think it was from the shock of what the Nazis did to his father yesterday. Inga, he died this morning. While I was sleeping or eating breakfast or walking along the Staffenstrasse, my friend died. Simply slipped out of the world without my knowledge. How ignorant I felt. How neglectful. And from that moment on, how totally convinced that tragedy is a cruel trick waiting to inflict itself when we are unaware. <laughs> girls in the wastebasket. We've been asked to dispose of those books. Why? It's one of the new directives. Because of the Jewish characters. Thank you, girls. Well, we have one more order of business before class begins. Will the following students please gather their things and stand? Our back. Don't involve Goldblum, Roth, Seligman, and Vintonitz. You six will change your seats with the girls in the back row. Lisa, go back to your seat. This is my seat. 
Lisa and Inga, I don't remember giving you permission to have a private conference. Lisa, you will return to your seat. Lisa, you've made your gesture. You've made your point. Now go back to your seat. All right, Lisa. I hope you're aware of the consequences of your actions should the new director enter the room. here too. It's like they followed me from Munich. All these girls wearing the same uniform. Or all these uniforms wearing the same girls. And I'm one of them. No, you're not. I know you're not. I've been telling myself that for months. I'll do what I have to do, I said. I'll dress like them and march with them and give the salute. But I won't change inside. But I thought I could do it. Until you saw me in my uniform. And I saw myself through your eyes. I didn't understand. I didn't understand what you had been going through. I only knew what I, Body, Moody, Opa, Oscar, and Tanya had been going through. Not you. Because people like my father and Heinz, they're not you, Lisa. They're your family, but you are different. Am I? For how long? Do you think I was just being nice or noble by sitting in the back of the class? I wanted to be one of you. I wanted to belong. I wanted to be honest before I lose myself in all the lies. That will never happen. In Munich, I was upset about Heinz and your letters. It all seemed so hopeless. I wish that I would die. And then I thought about you. Like a prayer, remember? And I felt better. When I got back, I confessed to Father Bernard. I know I can trust him with my confession. Lisa? What? Was Hans here a few weeks ago? Yes. Father came back for a meeting. Probably to help prepare for the Angelus. Hines came with him. I thought I saw him. I yelled to him, and he ignored me. I ran after him, and he ran away. Better for you. Stay away from Heinz and him. He's cruel. He's wicked and cruel. Don't you have any new manuscripts for me? No, ma'am. Well, where's the work for next week? There is none. Herr Dorfler said to tell you that he must come back on his employees and thank you for your services. What? After 14 years, he is firing me through a messenger? All I know is what I told you, ma'am. Of course, Gustalem. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, Gustav. Wait a minute. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Heil Hitler. Good day, Gustav. Good day, Frau Lohenborn. Anna, you'll get another job. Not if the Aryanization Board has its way. There won't be a Jew working in Austria. I didn't mean Austria. In Yugoslavia. 
And then New York. How many publishers will hire an editor whose native tongue is Austrian? Anna, the job is secondary. Don't you think I know that, Papa? We'll wait until the consulate reopens. We'll get our numbers, and when we do, then we will get our temporary visas. You have yours. I want you to leave now. I said not until you're better. I'm better. The cast will be off in two days. Why waste time? Get your train ticket and leave. We'll see. When the consulate reopens. Papa, please. Now. Oscar, it's not only for you. It's for us, too. If you're already in Yugoslavia, it might make it easier for us to leave. Think of the rest of the family. For miracles. Why? First, this beautiful leg that we miss so much has finally seen the light of day again. <laughs> and second. Second. After only 12 hours in line at the American consulate, the Donenbaum family have their quota numbers. Ah! Oh, oh, we need now are our Hi, Come on, hey. Well, do you know how happy you made me? Yes. Huh? Thank God. It had been so long since a reason for joy had visited our home. We savored it like the rare pleasure it was. A pleasure mitigated only by the knowledge that the happy events of the day also heralded my grandfather's departure. Zagreb, New York, in the future. To life. Mm -hmm. Why can't I go to the train station with you, old Oscar? Because I want you to think of me here, in a house with you. Not as a speck disappearing into the distance on some contraption. Uh, railroad stations are happy places for hellos, but they're sad places for goodbyes. Besides, you miss school. It's not school anymore. It's like training camp. I hate it. Hating can become part of you. It can begin to control you. Concentrate on what you love. Do something you enjoy today. Play hooky. Go to the first El Prato with your friend Lisa. You knew Lisa was here? I didn't get this old being stupid. Here. Here's ten shillings. Ride all the rides. I'll concentrate on you, old Oscar. But I on you, Ingeline. I'll see you soon. In Zagreb. New York, or wherever the fashionable refugee is traveling these days. Stay clever and good for me. My grandfather was wrong. Home was a sad place just for goodbyes, too.
even in my face. Princess Jasmine, can you see it in your mind's eye? Yes. I can see. I believe in the... A what? <laughs> Gusto, what are you doing here? Did Herr Dorfler send you? No, ma'am. I came on personal business. Are you all right? Are you thinking about your grandfather? And Tommy. I feel I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be having fun. Father Bernard says we honor the dead by celebrating life. But I worry that if I don't think about someone I miss, if I don't feel sad about them, they disappear. No. We carry the people we love with us, whether we think about them or not. Your grandfather knew that. That's why he sent you here today. It makes him feel good to know you're having fun. But are we having fun? So what are we waiting for? What? What did you see? I saw Herr Dornenwald put his arm around, embrace your Aryan maid. Mitzi? Yes, when I brought the manuscripts. Well, her daughter was in the room at the time. Do you think if I were going to embrace our maid, I would do it in front of our daughter? I don't know. All I know is I saw you behaving indecorously with her. And it is my duty as an Aryan to report it to the block warden. Indecorously is a pretty big word, Gustel. Where did you learn such a word? It's in the new directives. I see. And how much are you charging to forget it? What? How much money do you want from us, Gustel? Oh. Ten thousand shillings. We appreciate that, but it won't work. There's no justice in the new order. You'll be labeled a Jew befriended for defending me, and you'll bring trouble on yourself. Then are you just going to pay this creature the money? We can't. We don't have it. Then tell him. We tried. He's been told that all Jews hoard money. He thinks we're cheating him. That last boy. Mitzi, all we can do is try to buy time. We've told him that we'll arrange to have the money within a week. But we'll try to get our temporary visas and be gone by then. We wanted you to know so that you could look for another position. That good people like you should be forced to leave because of a nothing, an evil child unfit to... Oh, no. It doesn't make any sense. So few things do these days. Hannah, I'll go pick up Inga at school. You try to put together all our birth certificates and papers. Mm -hmm. Annie? Yes, Sir Gordon Paul? Have you seen Inga? Not since physical education. I see. Thank you, Annie. Tell us she was back. That her 
family was back. That's a lie, Inga, and you know it. You don't hear her. You don't even want to hear her. That's why nothing I say to you makes any difference. Inga, do you know why the Müllers moved to Munich? Father was transferred. But to do what? Why? Where? I don't know. Something called the Brown House. Inga, the Brown House is Nazi headquarters. Lisa's father must be very high up in the SA command. It's no accident that he came back after the annexation. You know that, don't you? Your father beat her for standing up for the Jewish girls in class. She's a good and loyal friend. She can't help what her father is. Papa Oscar told me that because you're a decent man, you expect to find decency in all other people. Why can't you expect to find decency in Lisa? I do, Inga, I do. Because of what you've told me about her, I do. But I still don't want you to see her anymore. Why not? You said it yourself, Inga. Lisa can't help what her father is. How do you think a man like him would are? An officer in the SA. A man who beats his daughter for befriending Jews. How do you think he would react if he knew that you two were still seeing each other? But we're very careful. We take a secret route when we walk home. If I saw you, he could see you. And if he did? Himula could give a simple order and rid himself once and for all of the embarrassment of his daughter befriending a Jewess. Our doorbell will ring at five or six in the morning, and this time the SA would not be so kind as to allow us, all of us, to go back home again. I don't want to frighten you, Inga. I simply want to make you aware that as long as we're here, and I hope it won't be much longer, we must be very careful. I'm entrusting part of the responsibility for our safety to you. What is it, Muti? Inga, where did you get this picture? my picture from my drawer in my room. Your privacy is secondary to this discussion. I want to know where you got the picture. Lisa sent it to me from Germany. And who's the boy in the picture with her? That's Lisa's brother, Heinz. Then Lisa's brother, Heinz, is the one who helped your mother down the steps with the soap suds. Lisa's brother, Heinz, is the one who almost killed me, but only succeeded in breaking my leg. So, now you know. I'm glad you know. No, I'm not. I'm ashamed. I wish you'd never found out. It's not your fault. It has nothing to do with you. Your family will take you away soon, won't they? Yes. Vati will try and get our temporary visas before Gustl speaks to the block warden. Heinz? Gustl, my father? All suddenly with so much power over people's lives. And no matter how many times the situation changes, our families will always be on different sides. But we won't be. No. We'll be bouncing back and forth like a soccer ball, wondering who's going to give us the next kick. I could bear going to Munich, because somehow I knew we'd be back. I knew I'd see you again, but now I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever see you again. I feel lonely already. You'll come back. Or you'll come visit me. Inga, it's not like school. I can't move to the back of the class with you. You're Jewish and I'm Catholic. We can't change it. We'll find a way. We've always found a way. I think... I think they've finally taken all our opportunities away from us. They left us no room to be ourselves. Be together. You sound like you're giving in. 
you're gonna let them win. It's not that I'm gonna let them win. But I do think they will win. Eventually. give you but I haven't a clue or a word for it I know I have the same for you I'm sure you understand. Many people wish to emigrate to Yugoslavia at this time, Mr. Dornenwald. And our unemployment is already very high. I have a telegram from my father-in-law in Zagreb, notifying me there is a position in the bookstore being held for me. Then my response would be, I regret to say, why should this job be denied a Yugoslavian citizen? So they'd rather protect a citizen's job than save a foreigner's life? Precisely. But I'll go to the Swiss Embassy again tomorrow. And I, I have to go back to the store. Inga, take your mother home in a taxi. You're looking exhausted. Oh, we're fine. You hurry off now. Now I'm going to see the consul. Forgive us, Herr Consul, for taking still more of your time. But I really just wanted to inquire about visiting your country for a short vacation. You see, I... I have this annoying condition. And my doctor thinks the best cure would be a week or so by the Adriatic. But, Elia, your husband spoke about moving there permanently. Oh! <laughs> That's a foolish whim of his. He knows that I would never consider moving away. Vienna's my home. It always will be. Excuse me for asking. Aren't you and your husband Jewish? Why, no. No. We're Catholic. We didn't think to bring along our baptismal certificates. Dear lady, I welcome you to visit our country with your family. Provided... Provided? Provided you can find your baptismal certificates, and they are dated 1936 or earlier. How could you say such a thing? How could you do such a I thing? I got caught in a lie, and the lie got bigger. Your first lie was to me, Hannah. You said that you were going straight home. You should never have gone back there in the first place. Well, I thought I might try a different tactic. Batting your eyelashes, playing the coquette. I wonder how many femme fatale Jewesses the consul has seen this week. You made a fool of yourself, Hannah. Well, I might have said or done something that you didn't think of. Thank you for the vote of confidence. No, something that might make the difference between us staying and escaping. There is nothing that you can say or do short of transforming yourself into a Christian. Well, I'm not going to hang back like a spectator and watch you fight all the battles. There's too much at stake here. Why not transform ourselves into Christians? No, Inga. There are some lies that are too great to tell, even to protect yourself. Why? Wouldn't really change anything. It's just a piece of paper. No, it's not just a piece of paper. There's a baptism. There's a ritual. Ritual has no meaning without belief. It still has an effect on you, on the way you feel about yourself. How would you feel having holy water sprinkled on your forehead? But the water wouldn't be holy to me. You're too young, darling, to understand all the implications. I understand the implications of staying here. I understand danger, intimidation, and death. I would bathe in gallons of holy water if it would bring Tommy back. Tommy died for what he believed in. We can live for what we believe in. Why should we give the truth to someone who will kill us with it? Opa Oscar says that there are many ways of being Jewish. It's a personal state of mind. As long as that doesn't change, it doesn't matter what we say to anyone.
especially to people who would destroy us. But even if we wanted to, we couldn't find a priest who would baptize us or predate our certificates to 1936. I know someone who might. Baptism is a sacred act, Lisa, not a convenience. Church ceremony cannot serve as a remedy for social ills. Isn't church ceremony deliverance from evil, Father? You would be delivering three people from evil. Lisa, you're asking me to make an ecclesiastic and a civil transgression. A false baptism violates the laws of the church. And a false document violates the laws of the state. But not doing it. Not saving three people from harm. Regardless of the method. Must surely violate the laws of God. Are you angry with me, Father? No. You won't report my family, will you? This was my idea, not theirs. No, of course not. This is a sacred conversation. Sacred. Dear God, am I hearing your voice through this child? Came for my money. Crystal, you haven't given us enough time. 10,000 shillings is a lot of money. We need a few more days. I've made an appointment to see the block warden tomorrow at noon. If I don't have the money by then, I'll keep the appointment. Making threats, the little Fiora. Yes, I would be very careful with my loose tongue if I were you. Servant to Jews. Be here before noon tomorrow. Hello. Yes, just a moment. Inga. Hello. Yes. Franz. Franz. Ego te baptizo in nomine Patris. Et fili. Et spiritus. Sancti. Anna. It's all right. Anna, ego te baptizo in nomine Patris, et filii, et spiritus sancti. Te baptizo in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Inga. You must hurry, darling. Your 
your father might be home from the consul at any minute. I'm just putting the last few things in my bag. You're not taking anything you don't need, are you? No. Nothing I don't need. You just tell them we're out for a while and leave early in the evening. Oh, and take anything you want. It'll make me happy to know you're using things that we've shared here. Oh, ma'am, I'm gonna miss you so. And I'll miss you, Mitzi. You've been a good and loyal friend. It's all right. I just wanted to thank you. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Um, we're going in world. I'm so sorry. That's Inga's star, isn't it? Yes, she gave it to me. I'm sure she did. Well, we're very proud that you're wearing it. You're a good girl, Lisa. A very good girl. Should I write you? Yes, you must. But your father, I don't care. Inga, we must go now. Blood sisters forever. Blood sisters forever. to my friend several times, but never received a reply. I don't know if her father destroyed my letters or if he prevented her from writing back. I think we both knew we would never see each other again. But I think we also knew that our memory would sustain us, that our kinship would somehow survive time and distance. I look 
back for the invisible thread that knits events together to form a life, to give meaning to a life. And I find the love and kindness 